and I want this shared everywhere to those who are listening. Very, very, I think it was Niger Loop that put the video together. Very, very interesting. That as with every other thing, it, it enters through one ear, the, the, the right ear, and goes out to the left one because we are black. We don't retain critical information, we don't analyze it, and we don't utilize it. Hello, everyone. This is Niger Loop. Welcome to our channel. In this presentation, we will take a look at hired Western mercenaries, some of who sacrificed their lives for the freedom of beer fronts. Unlike the crooks that claim to be fighting for Biafra from the comfort of their well air conditioned condos in Kuwait, the UK, the US, and elsewhere, these gallant white beer fronts shed flesh and blood in sacrifice for Biafra. Their names shall be written in gold. The division of Nigeria into 12 states was quickly announced by Gowan on May 27, 1967, on the advice of the British government. Southeastern state, river state, and east central states make up the three divisions of the eastern region created by this decree. This now meant the east central state-based Igbos would lose control over the majority of the petroleum in the other two regions. By the 29th of May, 1967, it dawned on the late Biofra General Ojuku that the Aburi agreements had been sabotaged. On May 30, 1967, the Biofra General Odumagu Ojuku declared Biafran independence from Nigeria. Not long after, it quickly became apparent that the Biafran army was unprepared and ill-equipped. Biafra commanders had no option but to hire foreign mercenaries for additional support because they were outgunned by Nigeria's superior firepower. Foreign Western mercenaries who had previously fought in the Congo crisis were drawn to Biafra with great interest. Biafra's War of Independence I hired Western mercenaries. Rolf Steiner, German. Jan Zambok, Polish. Lynn Garrison, Canadian. Taffy Williams, Welsh. Mark Gussons, Belgian. Carl Gustav von Rosen, Swedish and. Roger Fox, French. These heroic men shed blood for beer fronts to survive what was an orchestrated genocide. No one has told the story of their heroic sacrifices for Biafra against all odds. The 4th Commando Brigade of the Biafran Armed Forces was given over to German mercenary Rolf Steiner, who oversaw 3,000 men. The time has come to tell our stories ourselves or others will tell them for us. However, before we delve deeper into this story, I'd like you to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, endeavor to share as it encourages us to do better. Now back to the story. Colonel Rolf Steiner. German born Colonel Steiner, the former foreign legion sergeant who fought for the majority of his life, was born. He entered Biafra in 1968 to assist with the breakaway revolt and after demonstrating his abilities on several occasions, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant colonel and given responsibility for planning. After 16 months of bloody fighting, the Nigerian federal troops gained a huge amount of Biafra territories. However, Rolf Steiner declared the war was far from over. General Ojuku ordered an increase to two brigades, or 20 strike forces of 360 men each, which was greatly admired by Steiner. The new men are being armed with weapons that were purportedly bought with individual European credits as they enter Biafra from the neighboring nations of Gabon and the Portuguese island of Sotome. There were reports of up to 40 tons arriving. The 4th Brigade, led by nine white mercenaries, operated behind Nigerian lines for the first three months of the year. Later, it controlled portions of the Western Front but was compelled to withdraw when the Federal troops outmanned and outgunned it. The 4th Brigade was down to just 1,000 by early September after a failed attempt to defend Oba with resources equivalent to just 5 rounds of ammunition per month per day. More than 300 people have died and 2,200 people have been injured out of the roughly 7,000 men with whom he began the campaign. The rest were absent from the scene. One of Steiner's subordinates, the Welsh mercenary Taffy Williams, was in charge of 100 Biafran fighters. The other hide mercenaries under Steiner's command included the Italian Giorgio Nobiato, the Rhodesian Gianni Erasmus, the explosives expert Alexander Alec Gay, the Irishman Louis Paddy Mulroney, the Corsican Armand Irinelli, who had joined the Foreign Legion by feigning Italian nationality and a Jamaican bartender turned mercenary who went by the name of Johnny Correa. 
Pilot Jens Zambok, the Polish Swiss coordinated and led an Amitarish Air Force for Biafra. Hugh Taffith Williams was raised and completed his military training in South Africa after being born in Wales in 1933. Williams discovered that these Biafran soldiers were entirely different from the ones he oversaw in Katonga. I've seen a lot of Africans in battle, he reportedly said. But nobody can touch these people. For six months, give me 10,000 beer fronts and we'll assemble an army that would be unbeatable on this continent. Men who would have received the Victoria Cross in another situation have died in this war, in my opinion. He was an irascible man who was known for yelling non-stop at his men. Williams was also referred to in Biafra as bulletproof because of his capacity to recover from numerous wounds. Between December 1967 and October 1968, Williams was reported five times to have been killed in action, but each time he turned up alive. Williams, who had been given 100 Biafran fighters at the beginning of 1968, used only outdated weapons to hold off two battalions of Chadian mercenaries working for the Nigerian Federal Army. Early in April, after Williams redistributed his forces, the Chadians crossed the Cross River twice and seized Afikpo, a significant settlement on the western bank. Taffy Williams passed away in 1996. May his gentle soul rest in peace. He was one of the last white mercenaries to leave the country as secession came to an end. He was a man known for his bravery who served two tours of duty with the Biafran army and attained the rank of major. The leaders of the Biafran air operations were the Canadian Lynn Garrison, the Swedish Carl Gustav von Rosen, and the Rhodesian Jack Malak. They attacked Nigerian forces while also supplying weapons and food aid. Portuguese pilots transported weapons from Portugal to Biafra while serving in the Biafran Air Force. By converting some Chris Craft boats into gunboats, Steiner created a brown water navy that was effective at launching surprise raids for supplies and weapons. It was anticipated that using mercenaries against Nigeria would have a similar effect to that in the Congo, but the mercenaries were largely ineffective because the Nigerian military received far superior and more sufficient training than the Congolese militias. Even though there were some early successes, such as Operation OAU, over half of the 4th Commando Brigade was wiped out by Nigerian forces during the disastrous Operation Hiroshima of 15 to 29 November 1968. This caused Steiner to experience depression and a nervous breakdown and ultimately led to his expulsion and Taffy Williams's replacement. Despite the brutal onslaught of the Nigerian federal troops, these men had grown ideologically committed to Biafra's cause, which is unusual for mercenaries. Mark Gusens After his mission in the Congo, Mark Gusens, a decorated military man, came to Biafra in 1968 to support the cause by educating the militias of Biafra. When necessary, he also engaged in combat alongside his students. While in Biafra, he held the rank of major and served under Robert Fox, the commander of the French mercenaries. Belgian mercenary Mark Gussens was killed in a suicide mission by defensive Nigerian forces during Operation Hiroshima, may his soul find eternal peace. He was reportedly motivated by his hatred of the evil the British and Nigerian governments had become in orchestrating genocide against Biafrans while handing them the scriptures with the other hand. Steiner also claimed to have fought for Biafra for idealistic reasons, claiming that the Igbo people had been subjected to genocide. However, American journalist Ted Morgan dismissed his claims, describing Steiner as a militarist who craved war because killing was the only thing he knew how to do well. Robert Fox Robert Fox, a well-known French mercenary leader who had just completed a mission in Kotonga, arrived in Biofra in 1968 to lead the breakaway rebellion with the help of a group of mercenaries he had personally recruited. Despite his good fighting skills, he could not stand a chance against the sizable Nigerian army. He escaped from the state of Biafra as the federal troops approached. Lynn Garrison Following his conversion to mercenary status, Garrison served as a combat pilot in several conflicts before serving as a military and political advisor, allegedly with the backing of several U.S. government agencies and U.S. senators. Garrison fought for the Biafra breakaway state as a mercenary during the Nigerian Civil War in 1967 to 1970. 
Garrison was initially sent to Biafra to investigate strategies for disarming the Nigerian Navy frigate, which was encircling Port Harcourt to obstruct oil exports. The Biafrons discovered Garrison's skill as a pilot and requested his assistance. He conducted one bombing raid against Federal Airfield in Kano on August 20, 1967, in an almost inoperable B-26, and three MiG-17s were destroyed. When it was realized that light aircraft could serve as straightforward coin platforms, Garrison's friends James Bering and John Ferry of the Bering's Bank and Ferry Aviation Company families supported the idea. This idea was conceived by Count Carl Gustav von Rosen and it was implemented in May 1969. With the aid of his RCF training, Garrison was able to shoot down a MiG-17 and an IL-28 at Port Harcourt on May 22, 1969, among other Soviet-supplied aircraft. These raids were conducted frequently during this time. If not for the heroics of Biafra's 4th Commando Brigade, the best unit in Ojuku's small army, Tumwahia would have long since fallen. In the end, they sacrificed a lot but their efforts couldn't save Biafra. Thanks to the bloodline of saboteurs left and right, their children have grown in their footsteps and not even hiding it. The battle this time is going to be tougher but in the end, Biafrons will pull through. As young Biafrons of this generation prepare to engage the evil that neocolonialism is. Biafra media irats and the sabotage better continue hiding their anonymous faces because millions of Biafrons are not afraid to be labeled terrorists for the freedom of Biafra. Despite the fact this current Buhari Janjaweed APC government has created more terror franchises than real jobs, the European supremacist powers have decided to see no evil, hear no evil. They have continued to enslave Africans economically for their benefits. The same reasons for the first war is still the reason for the current agitation. Nigeria was fused by force. Now it's time to discuss how we wanted to live. Biafrons demand a referendum which isn't much to ask but if diplomacy fails, only a counter and equal force will suffice. Biafrons must rise and confront their oppressor once and for all. We must fight our way out just like others have done. Nobody will fight for you. The Yoruba nation is unstoppable and as for beer fronts, they already left the so-called Nigeria. The British neocolonial agents and their terrorist allies in Nigeria will never know peace until every indigenous tribe of Nigeria get to say how they run their lives. It's worth noting that several other mercenaries participated in the war against Nigeria's federal troops but these seven were prominent. May the souls of these gallant men rest in perfect peace. Their sacrifices will never be forgotten. Finally, we have made it to the end of this episode. In the future, we will take a factual review of countries that offered assistance to Biafra and those who backed the Nigeria federal troops to eliminate Biafrons. Now it is your turn to tell us what you think. Do you believe Biafra independence is imminent? Do you believe faceless agitators can lead you to freedom? Let us know your opinions in the comment section below and remember to share it with Biafra Irats so they can learn what sacrifice is. Like MNK said, they will kill us. We will kill them. In the end, Biafra will come. Thanks for watching.